Forgive the bad lighting and the bloodshot eyes. No sleep. I tried to sleep, take a nap before work, but my mind was going 120 miles an hour. And then a thunderstorm kicked in, so I just could not sleep. But I had an epiphany. Well, my mind was racing. And unfortunately, keeping my body up. What is going on with the federal government and the Democratic Party, better known as the Liberals? You have to remember that Torqueville, when he did his tour of the United States in the 1800s, and he wrote his famous books on the American experience as he saw it, he said one of the most amazing things about America and the American people was no matter where he went, what community he went in, there was involvement on the local level. The very basic mechanism of government existed in the United States from coast to coast. No matter where he went, he saw that involvement and concern in the people. And while I was talking to my, uh, well not my state rep, because my state rep is a liberal, but when I was talking to a couple state reps at the GOP barbecue today, and the state senator, I realized how ill-informed I am on what's going on in the state capitol. Now, in theory, though the actions that take place in the state capitol should have a greater effect upon my life, and your lives as well. But, unfortunately, that's not the case. Also, what goes on within the city where I live is another issue that we have seem to have lost. And the problem is not the lack of concern on my part or your part. The, concern, the problem is the overreaching effort put forth in D.C. upon state and local governments. It basically draws all of the attention of what's going on in the country and the world and puts the focus on D.C. With the focus on D.C., all we are talking about in all what all of us are upset about, even, quote-unquote, the liberals are upset about, takes place in D.C. So, our states are reacting to what is going on in D.C. instead of serving us as best they can. Now, that may not make much sense, but think of all of the efforts that have been going on in various states to defend the Second Amendment. That is completely irrational. The Constitution should not need to be defended by the states. It is something that has been determined is our right. And it's the second right. It's the Second Amendment right behind the first because without the second there is no way to defend the first are we going to trust the courts to defend the first amendment after they destroy the second amendment that doesn't make any sense 
So the state legislatures are responding to all of the people that they represent that are completely pissed to no ends at what's going on in D.C. because D.C. will not respond to the people of this country. And it's taking away something from local activism. That ability, that touch with what's going on in your backyard. Because now, everyone is concerned with what's going on in D.C. And we should be concerned about what's going on in D.C. But, excuse me, we only have so much time in a day. Each of us can only handle absorbing so much information in a particular 24-hour period. And then when you take into account, we all have to sleep, we all have to work, we all have families that we have to make time for, we all have other commitments. We cannot absorb all the information and respond to everything as, I don't say we need to, as is needed, as should be done to keep D.C. on a short leash. It is nothing more than an argument against the overreaching authority that takes place in Washington, D.C. And the sad thing is, it takes place no matter which party is in power. Obviously, it takes place at a much greater level when the Democrats are in power. But, ever since Reagan, as in after Reagan, the government, the federal government, has grown. Reagan did shrink it. Not much, but he did shrink it. But Bush did pass, did sign several bills into law that added to the bureaucracy, that created more problems. Clinton, of course, signed a whole crap load of them. Bush did some as well. And, not to be outdone, Obama is doing a mountain of problems. So, the way I see it is this, especially the Democrats, is an assault on that basic premise that Torqueville loved about the United States. Because we are not taking care of things locally. We are constantly on the defensive of the assaults of the federal government. Now, I'm not a minimalist. I am not a purist of the Constitution like Mark Levine. Although I do respect Mr. Levine immensely. I believe that times do change. And the Constitution, the country, must change as well so that we may remain, remain relevant and powerful. However, there are basic premises and principles that made the country strong that we really do have to stick with. If an amendment if a concept within the Constitution is outdated, then we have to get rid of it. And there is a process for that. But, if it, it's not a living Constitution, it does not evolve and change. The right to bear arms does not evolve and change. It does not mean that we have the right to bear muskets. It does not mean 
that we can have these rights limited to lawful citizens. What it means is simple. It is a check and balance against an oppressive federal government. The power that is concentrated within the states is a check and balance against an overly powerful federal government. The federal government is only supposed to maintain the unity of the states and deal with areas that are not delegated to the states. The enumerated powers within uh, Article 1 section, I'm sorry, Amendment R 1 8. Sorry, I'm half asleep. If I remember correctly, there are 20 powers that the federal government is specifically said to have. Without those, tw other than those 20, it has to get permission from the people and the states to be able to take over or even temporarily have a power delegated to it. Or it has to expand its power by getting another amendment passed to the Constitution. And of course, with the way human nature is, no state wants to give up its power, let alone all 50 states give up more power to the federal government. The best way to handle this is to limit the power of the federal government, to push back against it. Because we have 50, 50 laboratories of democracy. Each one of these 50 can try different things. And if it works, it will be copied by 49 others. And of those 49 others, many may find it will not work for them for various reasons, be it culture or because of where they are located at. But one thing I can guarantee you, the federal government trying to force one way on all 50 states is guaranteed to fail someplace in the 50 states. Leave decisions that are not covered in the Constitution up to the states. Allow people like me to be more involved with local government and state government and not have to worry about what the federal government is doing. There is absolutely no reason for the federal government to be this country's largest employer when you take out all of military, active duty military personnel. When you take all the active duty military personnel out of the picture, the United States federal government is still this country's largest employer. And that is ridiculous. That is not the small government our founding fathers envisioned. Think about it. Thank you.